So if what they so if what they are are terminating you for is incorrect, then you got to be willing to fight for your stuff. And I think a lot of people, you know, they just let it go. It's like, fuck them. I'll go somewhere else. And then when they can't get nowhere else and wondering why, and it's like, man, how they just, you know, go mess up my, 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 my driving career. And, 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 and that's not even what happened, but you know, that's why, that's why they have lawyers and courtrooms and, and things like that. Let's go boy. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel. We got another one for you, another post, another story. We're going to be bringing stories to you guys. Interesting posts that we be coming to in Facebook groups, TikToks, and other content that be coming to me via link or email. This post right here is about a driver that got terminated from all companies, Western Express. And the reason why he got terminated was because of a refused random drug test. Let's get into it. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. So the company I worked for Western Express terminated and said I refused a random drug test. When I didn't, I communicate to them. They were booked up under staff and probably wouldn't be able to see me that day. I told my DM and I also told him I had a breakdown. He said, take care of that. I'll see what I can do and hung up. He rescheduled the load for a later time, and he said once I'm down with breakdown head over there. So I made delivery, and I was waiting for two days for him to reschedule random, then I was terminated for refusal take random. Was I in the wrong, or was there miscommunication? Well, what, was he, what would he have been in the wrong for? Well, good. Was he trying to go to his own place, or was they sending him to a particular place? Well, by the sounds of it, it looks like that they were sending him to their clinic so that he can get a random drug test. That means they would have scheduled it, which meant it wouldn't have been a problem for him to go and have it done at the time that they told him to go. Well, he went the first time. And when he went the first time, they was, they was booked up and they was understaffed. That was the first time that he went. Okay, but was that an appointment made by him? No, that was, an, was appointment, that an appointment made. That was an appointment made by them. Okay, so then he went and he should have stayed us there until they could get to him. If they stepped on him. But by the sounds of it, it sounds like the company or Well then they should have communicated back to the company that scheduled him to let them know that their office was understaffed and overbooked and they would have to reschedule him. He shouldn't have had to be the one to relay that information. That's the miscommunication. He wasn't the one that scheduled it. Right. So that's so you 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 agree that's miscommunication then. That that wasn't his fault. Yeah. I mean if that's the way it went, yeah. Now it's 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 crazy that you can get hemmed up and automatically be in the SAP program. It's not to say that he's in the SAP program, but the other driver we about to talk about is in the SAP program because of a, of a refusal. But it's crazy. That they can say you refuse something that you never refuse. Right. That's crazy. Right. And then that goes on your record. And now everybody looking at you sideways. And I think, I, I think that when it comes to that, they give these companies too much leeway that they can report whatever they want to report on a driver, whether it be true or not. And the driver can't do anything about it. Well, the driver, this particular driver right here did go back and express the fact that he talked to his DM and it sounds as though the DM was cool with the situation. He said, okay, well, they're understaffed and they're overbooked and all like that. And we'll just schedule you or reschedule you to go in the next day. Why, why they couldn't do that? So how did that turn into a, a refusal for a random and a termination? It has to be more to it. Well, yeah, there's there's always got to be more to stuff. But Even if it's the company didn't like them and they was looking for a reason to get uh, get rid of them. I mean, that could either be. way, yeah. it got to be, it had to be more to it because if he's doing his job and he's following all the rules and he's, and he's doing whatever they ask him to do, why would they just fire him? I agree. I agree. I mean, but do you think, let me ask you this, since you, since you brought that up, with companies going in the tank as, as a lot of companies are, do you feel that this could be one of the ways to instantly get rid of drivers? 
just by sending them on a random and something happens for them I not mean, to do the random are you, sending a, are you sending a group and the whole group is getting terminated because i know you ain't gonna pick them off one by one it's possible he got well, sniped wow. he got sniped but all the companies that were being closed down was not picking off their employees one at a time they just shut the doors and was like i'm sorry i ain't got no employees." <laughs> you said i'm sorry i'm out I mean, but that, that's what was happening. So I don't think that would be the case. This story comes from another truck driver of the same thing, but from a different company. He says, man, this is mad discouraging. I have applied over 75 jobs. I get call back and all because of my experience. But as soon as I ask if they take SAP, I get the boot. I called big companies. I called small companies. I done look up local jobs odor dedicated and still nothing. I even tried to reach out to recruiters, but all they recommended is Super Ego and CFI I won't touch Ego with a 10 feet pole. Did I tell you they wouldn't take me to? Oh my God. Hold on. So what happened with you and controversial company Super Ego? Well, you know, I, I, feel, I feel that driver's pain because as you know, when I was let go the last time, uh, I was also looking for other companies, you know, calling, applying, going through, you know, recruiting channels and all of that. And uh, with with Super Ego at, at that particular time, and I don't know if this is always the case, but they were only doing um, owner operators and leasing and leasers. So I was like, you know, I'm open to leasing, a, you know, leasing or, you know, going on a purchase plan or whatever. Right, just to get back in the truck. Sorry, can't, can't help you. Wow. Sorry, can't help you. And you reached out to them and they, they actually said no? Yeah, it was kind of. We got drivers that had less time than you getting on with controversial company Super Eagle. They, did they give you a definitive no, reason why they didn't bring you was, on or, didn't, or didn't give you a try or what? I, I, I didn't have the experience what? required. They only looking for four months. You had that. Mm. Are you are you sure you just I kid you not. Wow. You got you got over a year, right? At least. I had ten months. Well, close of, to it. Of OTR. Well, ten months. After and they, I finished school, ten months. And they looking for and they looking for guys for four months and they didn't yeah. Well, this driver says that he wouldn't touch ego with a 10 foot pole i wouldn't either but i just figured i would give him a try you know because of the conversation that we had about that yeah just to get back in the truck i guess right and cfi declined me for csa score honestly fuck pam for slapping with a refusal yeah the csa score um i think it has something to do with um when they get the the, the road inspections out on the road um because the company can have a CSA score too, but the drive, the individual driver can also have a CSA score. Well, he didn't go into too much detail about his CSA score. He said that was the reason but it why. But must have C been enough for them. Yeah, for to C not want to hire. Him. Yeah, for CF CFI to decline him, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's unfortunate that he must have in this situation right here because he said he got slapped with a refusal. So he must have either went in for a random and something must have happened. And he got, again, he got slapped with a refusal, which automatically puts him in the, in the SAP program. And I, I think that's, I think that's unfair. That's, that's not fair. It is unfair. Let's say like for me, when I know I got to go for a random or for any type of drug test, I, I, I pregame. I I drink a lot of water, and by the time I get there, I let them know right then and there. I'll be like, "Hey, I'm ready to go. Uh, ready to go where? I'm I'm ready to go to the bathroom. So if we can get this part out the way first, that would be cool. Let's get this out the way, and then we can fill out the paperwork and all like that. You got a tinkle, tinkle? Yes, very much so. So let me go ahead and tinkle and get all this out the way and then we could get with the paperwork see a lot of people when they get hit with a random this is for the new drivers I, i'm sure the veteran drivers should already know better like myself but for the new drivers they just willy-nilly get up and go and think they're gonna get that 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 pee out and it just don't come and then you gotta end up sitting in there drinking water and 
wait an hour and then drink some more water and then wait another hour and stuff like that. I ain't got time for all of that. I I pregame. I drink all my water before I get there so I can so about time I get there, I'm ready to go. And that's all fine and good. But again, that does not help the person who arrives at a testing site and is told that they probably will not be able to see him that day, even though he was said scheduled by his company. And uh, and then he loses his job. You know, I think I think, um, you know, people have to, you have to fight for you for for your stuff. And I mean, if you know you absolutely have done nothing wrong, then you need to be OK with picking up the phone and calling the lawyer because now this company has affected your ability to get rehired elsewhere so if what they so if what they are are terminating you for is incorrect then you got to be willing to fight for your stuff and i think a lot of people you know they just let it go and it's like fuck them i'll go somewhere else and then when they can't get nowhere else and wondering why and it's like man how they just you know go mess up my 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 driving career and 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 that's not even what happened but you know that's why that's why they have lawyers and courtrooms and and things like that you gotta be willing to fight for your stuff if it's really that important to you if it's not i agree I mean, but some of us drivers don't but some of us drivers don't have courtroom money those particular well, lawyers but when right? you're suing when you're suing and you know you're see a person who who knows that they have done nothing wrong that they can legitimately uh verify their side of the story we ain't worried about how much money we do and don't have because the lawyer gonna see to that part but now when you go in there skeptical and you're like well how much is it gonna cost me to, for you to then 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 obviously your story ain't as, as ain't as straight as you say it is because a lawyer that know when he get a client in front of him and it's like okay you 100 percent fact can can verify your side of the story and i ain't gonna go doing my investigation and find some other stuff happening if a lawyer know that it's easy money he taking you because he want to make some money too you definitely got a point there I mean, why do you think they advertise those CDL law lawyers to help you fight? It ain't just it ain't just for a ticket. They help you fight a whole lot of stuff that that is meant to secure your 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 future, your career, your license. Well, but if you ain't willing to fight for it, then that's what I'm that's what I'm going to start doing. I, I'm definitely going to start taking advantage of of my of my lawyers because I, I I pay into the the legal shield at what fifty dollars a month i i've been paying into that for for years now let them keep let them so, keep your name out their mouth yeah That's yeah yeah exactly exactly so but yeah i'm definitely going to take advantage for now on because you learn as you go yeah absolutely. that's that's what this trucking thing is all about you learn as you go now unfortunately for these two gentlemen that got hemmed up in the, with the with the drug test and all like that they know now that the next time they go in the one situation he will wait until they actually see him but if that was me, I would have. If if they was busy, they was booked, they was shorthanded. I, I think I would have. I think I would have been like school. I I think I would have had them to give me a doctor's note or give me some type of letterhead. Like that. They they, they, they're gonna they, have. They're gonna have to. Gonna this say, is my oh, job. No, no. Okay, but they. Listen, they this is my job. You're jo talking no. about a medical facility. They do not write no. you a note saying no. we were not able to drug they, test your employee they got, because we were overbooked and under. Well, they got. They got to. They, they got to do, do that. Well, they got to do something. Don't waste your ass there until they no. can get to you. No. You got to be the yeah. last person that day. But that's what I'm saying. If they, if they're overbooked and they're short staff and i i get there and they tell me and say hey sir we won't be able to get to you today go back to your company and have them to reschedule you well give me something in writing so you i need can to make that phone call while you sit right there in that office but that don't work you i need don't to, no, no no don't. no no i need something if before i leave before that said i leave I was here. and i need something that, that I said here. i was here and you guys you guys you not me you could not see me for whatever reason 
I need you to I put that you. on. I need you to put that on paper so that I can take that to my company and say, here, this is what happened. And it's all right here on paper. That's that. That's what I would have did. Because like I said, I learned throughout the years. And if that happened to me, just like companies, listen now, companies like to put stuff on paper. If you get yeah. right, if you get written up, they put it on paper. If you get a verbal, they put it on paper. I, I, that part right there, I don't understand, but that's a whole nother topic. Well, but you have to it, document that they get that they had a verbal conversation. Yeah, with but you. still though, if you had a verbal, it ain't no point of putting it on paper. You yeah, it is verbal, because it has to show a track. It has to show. Okay, we well, have to show what the what the what the toma um, tomato to model. Anyway, okay, but listen, what I was trying to say is also that mm -hmm. it's the driver who has to do their due diligence, right? If your company says you need to go in for a random, right? You have to do your due diligence at at all costs to say I got to do this. Right. I have to get this done, right? And if, and if you are and if that facility is is 100 saying that they are not going to see you that day before you leave that office i need i need you to be on the phone with my company because i'm here i'm ready to go well either and, either on the phone well, because they'll probably throw that back in your face like oh we don't have time oh we don't the have time to call and company. well yeah but they could say we don't have time to call. We about whatever, whatever. No, that. that's I, why you pick up your phone and you call them. Yeah, but and you let them put it on speaker. But listen, no, no, you, you, yeah. even if it's on I'm speaker, just, hey, even listen, even if it's, it's a, on it's speaker, it's another avenue. It's even, another avenue. Even if it's on speaker, you want them to write you a damn note like I you, need. Like the, you yeah, I school. need right. So, that's what I'm saying. I need that it's note. A, no, I need it on. No, it's on legal. No, it's legal and binding. If it's on a, if it's on a official letterhead of that clinic is legal and binding if it's recorded what on the call yeah yeah but it's you you anything could be squabbled up when it comes to recording yeah. on these companies no how, on these how, that, how that particular conversation don't don't have clarity but all the other conversations do no good question don't work like that but still, I I need I I need mine on the letterhead. I I I need to know. But again, I'll, I'll again, call them. I'll, okay, the I'll, point, I'll call them. I'll get my DM the on the is, phone. These drivers have to know that don't think something can't happen to you. That's the whole reason why I always say to people, you gotta do your homework. You gotta join these different groups. You gotta you get these newsletters. You gotta talk to experienced people because you can avoid a whole lot of um heartache and headache learning from other people's experiences don't think oh this ain't gonna happen to me because it happened to you think oh this could happen to me so let me find out what i can do to either prevent it or to counteract it when it does happen so i don't end up in this situation you know you can't just go get your license and think that that's all there is to it you got to also learn how to protect your license and that's the part a lot of people miss and then when something happens that is now uh putting their license in jeopardy now they want to go on social media and complain well social media ain't gonna help you to maintain your license social media ain't gonna fight for your license you know a lot of people complain in the wrong places by the time you get to social media i need you to have already done some things that will either correct the problem uh resolve the problem or at least say well this is all the stuff i've done and this is where we're at with it now don't just come to social media to go and complain and you have not done nothing on your part to try to alleviate the situation to resolve the situation because that's not helping the next driver well for for me in this situation when it comes to a random or any kind of drug test i'm prepared i'm i'm prepared i'm ready to pee i'm ready to get it in and again if i'm in that situation what what the second driver was in or the first driver was in as far as anything would prevent me from taking the drug test and it's because of the, the clinic's error then yes i'm gonna need something from the clinic to verify 
that they couldn't see me for whatever reason but for me as the driver yeah i am going to be prepared i am going to do my due diligence and if i have to sit and wait there i will sit and wait there until my name is called but I will let them know awesome. like I am ready to go because I, I went and took the drug test recently and I told them I was ready to go, but I still had to wait maybe about a couple of minutes. But yeah, that wait was kind of hopping in a hopping in a chair like a five year old. You know what I'm saying being, being, being prepared is is a small fraction of, of, of the situation. I mean, of course you should go prepared. You know you're going for a drug test. You know they're going to need to take urine from you. So, of course, you should go there prepared. That's that's without saying. But when you get there and you're being told that, oh, we're not going to get to you today, being prepared, or, being prepared ain't going to resolve that issue. So, again, you have to do your due diligence. We ain't just going to turn around and walk out the door and make a phone call. No, we, go, we, we need to resolve this while I'm standing here in this office today. What are we going to do? Email the company, my company. They were the ones that scheduled this. I need you to send an email to them, letting them know that you refuse to see me today because you were your clinic was overbooked and understaffed and that you need to have me rescheduled or that you did reschedule me for such and such date. Sounds good to me. Because when they get the results, they got to send it to your company. They're not giving the results to you. Everything they do is going to be dealing with the company. Right, right. Right. And they'll and, and you want to know what's funny? These these clinics will call the company quick. They will do that. For whatever reason, if it's a drug test or you going in there for a DOT physical, they will call the company quick. For whatever reason, your blood pressure's out of whack. They're going to call the company and be like, oh, yeah, we we not going to give him a DLT card or anything like that. Well, you, you can't give me a three month card so I can at least go to my doctor. But they they will call the company quick. And you're exactly right. It is. They, they will keep in contact with the company for whatever reason. So. Do your do do your due diligence, drivers. I'm I'm just saying, if you if if that for whatever reason that you can't take the drug test for starters, do not sign in because if you sign in, it's binding. If you up and leave for whatever reason, you get another offer. You get your your mom call you, your sister, brother, husband, daughter, wife calls you, and you gotta bounce. You got and you already signed in do the drug test and then leave because if you go up to them be like yo i gotta bounce sorry and you already signed in it's binding and that's a refusal scheduled you and told you to report for for a drug test and you don't show up well that's just, di no 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 that's different if you don't show up then that's your fault yeah if they schedule you and you don't show up and I'm I'm thinking this is like for a random. If it's pre-employment and you don't show up, you could just simply call the company and be like, "Yeah, I I'm, I'm taking another offer or whatever the case." Or I'm not. That's not a refusal because you didn't go to the place and sign in. When you sign in, it is binding. That's where they can get you at. But people just have to remember, you're not little kids. You're full grown adults and you have to be out here, you know, operating as an adult. You can't bitch moan and complain like children in school trying to tell your parents that the teacher ain't treat you right. You're an adult. You have to go out here into the world and act as an adult. Agree. Handle your business. Yep. Don't go. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of your shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.